This is the Salish Sea. It is on the northeastern border of the Pacific Ocean. It has a surrounding population of about 8 million people. Did you know that the Salish Sea's coastline length, including islands, is over 4,600 miles long? But even though it's so awesome and unbelievably huge, we still have a big impact on it, and not so much in a good way. We need to help the Salish Sea. Coast Salish tribes and First Nations people are leaders in protecting the Salish Sea. The native people of the Salish Sea have been here for thousands of years. This map shows the indigenous lands. And look at how many tribes call this area home. We need to respect and support the native people. We can learn from them because they have protected the Salish Sea longer than we'll ever know. The Salish Sea hosts around 3,500 different species of animals and supports a huge ecosystem. The truth is we polluted it too much and many animals are dying or getting hurt. There are many things we can do to help, but we need your help. Have you ever been to the beach and played in the shallows? Well, there's more life there than you think. This is the tidal zone. Down at the inner tidal zone, the water's always moving, so the critters had to adapt. Look at this thing. It's called a geoduck, but it looks like an elephant in a shell. Actually, it's called a gooey duck. Did you know that the gooey duck is the largest burrowing clam in the world? Sometimes you can see them burrowing in the sand. Gooey ducks burrow about two feet below the tide. Can you eat it? Most of it. Gooey ducks eat toxin-producing algae, which collect in the visceral ball, so you have to take it out. Another animal that lives in the Salish Sea is a sea star. Did you know a sea star can have more than five limbs? The sunflower sea star can have up to 24 limbs, and it can get to about a meter across. They are one of nearly 30 species of sea stars in the Salish Sea. But sea stars have been dying from a mysterious waste and disease. Some believed is linked to warmer water from climate change. This can mess with the sea stars and make them more able to be infected. Yeah. Scientists are still trying to stop it. Hopefully they find out soon. Welcome to the subtitle zone. You mean down here? No, that's the subtitle zone. Oh. Subtitle means below the tides in the deeper parts of the Salish Sea. Life in the deeper parts of the Salish Sea is not the most fun thing you could imagine. It's so dark that no plants can grow, which means the fish down the deep can't eat. So what they do is they wait at the bottom for remains of other fish to fall down to them. And they also spend a lot of time eating each other. Lots of creatures have been found in the Salish Sea by deep sea explorers. Without scuba divers and their cool gadgets, we wouldn't even know about half of the sea life in the Salish Sea. One way scientists get information is by getting inside a submarine, then they lower the submarine down into the deep. But we still have only scratched the surface of the Salish Sea. One of my favorite subtitle animals is the wolf eel. Wolf eels are capable of crushing spiny red urchins with a single bite. Adult wolf eels make their homes in dens, caves, or crevices on reefs or pilings. Wolf eels are not eels at all, they're fish. Wolf eels get caught in crab traps and pollution degrades their habitat making it uninhabitable. Don't pollute the Salish Sea because it hurts wolf eels. One of the most famous animals in the Salish Sea is the giant Pacific octopus. An adult Pacific octopus can weigh about 200 pounds and can live for three to five years in the wild. Giant octopuses eat redfish, snails, scallops, and crabs. Fishing has lowered the population because the nets are trapping a bunch of octopuses inside them. We need to pay more attention to what goes into our fishing nets. The deeper parts of the Salish Sea may not be known to everyone, but they are still important. Orcas killer whales, wolves of the sea. We are really lucky to have orcas here in the Salish Sea, but we are not taking good care of them. Orcas are dying because salmon are dying and we need to do something about it. Pods in the Salish Sea are J-pod, K-pod, and L-pod. And they all eat salmon. salmon. Orcas communicate and navigate using echolocation like other dolphins. Each pod uses its own series of quicks and squeals to interact. But engine sounds from boats are preventing orcas from understanding one another. Orcas are wonderful creatures and we need to help them. As you've heard, many animals live in the Salish Sea, but not all of them stay in the Salish Sea. Some animals migrate, 
One of the most famous migrations is the journey of salmon. Salmon are interesting animals. They migrate from streams to the sea, traveling hundreds of miles. Then they return to the exact stream they are born in so they can spawn and lay their eggs. It's all part of the salmon life cycle. There are actually five different types of Pacific salmon. Pink, silver, king, sockeye, and chum. Other animals that migrate through the sail sheet include humpback, gray, minke, and killer whales, and more than 30 species of shorebirds. Since the salmon population is declining, hatcheries are hatching salmon eggs and releasing them back into the wild. We need to help the salmon since there is only 5% of the original population left. We can help by not littering, disposing batteries and chemicals safely, and installing fish ladders and dams so salmon can get past them safely while migrating. Salmon are a keystone species because orcas need a lot of salmon to survive. That's why we need to have healthy salmon to have healthy orcas. If you currently live near the Salish Sea, then you know how important it is. As you've heard, we've done a terrible job taking care of it. Well, we have some tips on how to save the Salish Sea. You can be a Salish Sea hero. Here are some ways to do it. Help take out invasive plants that harm wildlife habitats. Try starting a campaign to ride buses and bikes more. You can help restore salmon streams. Try writing to an elected official. You can sign up to become a Junior Sea Doctor at JuniorSeaDoctors.com. And you can always do a... Beach Cleanup! Remember, the coastal tribes and the First Nations are the original Salish Sea heroes, and they continue to guide and inspire us. The Salish Sea is a beautiful place with many wonderful creatures. Even though we have done some good things, we have done a lot of bad things to it. We can help fix it, but it will take some time and hard work. We hope you know how important the Salish Sea is. Remember, you can be a Salish Sea hero. Your actions can never be too little.